Okay, everybody quiet on the set, please. In one, two, three, boom. Adam. Yes. I am so glad that I am drinking for this interview. You have no idea. I feel very neglected. And on that note, are we ready to roll? Hi, welcome to Wine with Adam. I'm your host, Adam Scott Fellows, and today I am here in the city of Jerusalem at the Safania Hotel in Geula with my very good friend and very special guest, Tuvia Tenenbaum. Nice to meet you, Adam. It's a pleasure to be with you right here at this moment of time, at this historic moment of our lives. It's a pleasure. It's really Gan Eden. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I, can I tell you something? It's it's total paradise being with you as well. Yeah, thank like, you. I've never met anybody as entertaining as you. And now I'm going to so I'm going to make this time even more fun because well, today, you so much. I really appreciate it. today we are going to be drinking the 2020 Jezreel Rosé. It's a blend of Carignan, Syrah, and Sauvignon Blanc. Perfect. This comes from the, the north up in Emek Jezreel, the Jezreel Valley, yeah. uh, where ancient wine presses are scattered all over the place. Yes. Uh, this is actually one of Israel's finest wineries. This yes. is probably the most fruit forward rosé you can wow, find. Wow, 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 wow. And believe it or not, this uh, How wine- How much does a bottle like this cost? This costs about 80 shekels. You can 80 shekels? 80 shekels. And you, you give it to me for free? And I'm giving it to you for free. Can you keep it closed? I am not keeping it closed because we are going to open it. We are going to drink it. You can find it at WineOnTheVine.com and you can get it both in America and in Israel. Without question, this is one of my favorite rosés. And they actually have a 2021 rosé that just came out. We're drinking last year's, believe it or not. And I find both of them to be absolutely exquisite. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy it because I love being around you sober but I'm definitely going to like more being around you after a little bit of alcohol in your system. Thank you so much. Mazel tov. L'chaim. L'chaim. Now listen, I want you to tell me what you smell and I want you to tell me what you taste. I smell the beauty of ancient Israel. I see the lovers in Shira Shirim, Song of Song. I see the love of flowering between them. Oh, God. <sighs> this is without a doubt the best wine tasting I've ever done. Wow. Oh. You have to make a book. We are in, in, in Jerusalem. We are in, in Mea Sharim or Geula or Kerem Abraham. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech. Oilom. Boi Rei Pri Hagofen. Amen. L'chaim. So, Tuvia. Yes. Ask me any question you want. Maybe you'll get an answer. Well, maybe let's not. let our let's let our guests know exactly who you are. Almost PhD. Yeah. MFA in English literature from SUNY Brooklyn. And drama, creative writing. Drama. Yeah. Founder of the Jewish Theater of New York. And uh, mathematics and. Uh, and a BS um, in mathematics from Toro College, but yeah. also you're in the computer author science also. in computer science. You're the author of a number of different plays. You're yeah. a journalist and you're an author and you're a husband. Yes, that's correct. And so right now, you just published a new book called The Taming of the Jew. Before that, you published the book Hello Refugees. Hello Refugees. And, and, and then The Lies We Tell. The and, Lies We Tell. But the, but the book that really brought you attention was To Catch a Jew. So for people that aren't really familiar with you and aren't familiar with your work, uh, theater and playwriting and acting yeah. are so prevalent in all of your books and you portray so many different characters throughout the stories that you tell, somewhat going undercover. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. What uh, gave you your love of theater? You grew up, uh, your, your mother was a Holocaust survivor. Your father was a rabbi. You were born here in Israel. You, you, you started in computer science and, and math and then went to I theater. Actually, but wait, okay. so, what, so what gave you your love of theater and dramatics? Okay, to start with, I didn't start with mathematics and computer science. Okay. I started here, in this neighborhood, which I call the Greater Mea Sharim. I grew up in Bnei Brak, Haredi city. Learned there in Cheder and in Yeshivas. Cheder. Cheder and in Yeshivas later. For the better part of my early years in life, I was a Talmud learner. Uh, that's what I learned, I learned a Talmud. Uh, I studied the Talmud. 
Um, only after I left here, and I left the Haredi world, I moved to America, so I wanted to compensate for everything I didn't know, because in the yeshiva, I learned only yeshiva studies. Do you think that it's a problem that you didn't get that secular education along I, with your Torah I, studies? I personally don't see that. I don't see it that way. Because and then it, I, I, it's I made, a big leap from rabbinics to playwrights. And okay, so, so first of all, I wanted to know to close the gap, so to speak, of my okay. education, non-Jewish education. I wanted to know the, the purest element of, of culture, uh, of science, put it this way, of the culture outside of science. So I studied this. I spent some years studying mathematics and computer science. And then I wanted to go, I said, okay, the other part that's missing in me is the humanities. So I went to study, I went to Bogan College. I registered for English literature. Mm -hmm. And there was one course over there called Modern Drama. And I was scratching my head, what could it be? Imagine you're a ready boy and you look at something that says Modern Drama. You have no clue what you're talking about. And I went to my professor, Professor Jack Galba, in Brooklyn College, the graduate division. I went to my professor and I said to him, I heard that you also teach creative writing, drama writing. I want to go to your class. I want to move from English literature to your class. And my professor looked at me and he said, my students in creative writing, all of them have at least five years experience in writing plays. You forget it writing. You don't even know. You don't know. Read a play. I said to him, listen, I am from Israel, but this is America. And I have been told that in America, you give everybody a chance. There are no rules. It's open society. You just have to prove yourself. Aren't you Americans or something like that? So let me prove myself. The professor looked at me and says, Mr. Tenenbaum, you have a lot of chutzpah. And it's obviously you have never written anything because nobody can write a play in one week. I said to him, try me. I bought a, a, typewriter. a typewriter and I wrote a play. And the name of the play, it's called The Russians Are Coming. That's the title. And I gave it next week at class. I gave it to my teacher. I said, Professor, here it is. He sat down and he read it. And he accepted me as a student of his. L'chaim. L'chaim. Towards the end, I wrote a play about a Jewish issue, about Boro Park. Okay. And my professor is a Jewish. Communist, atheist as much as they come. And that Jew, in Meir Shorim, they called Tapin Taleid, <laughs> came out of him. A and he said to me, Tapin Taleid, and he said to me, Tuvia, we Jews don't know how to write a place like this. Jewish writers have no Jewish education. You wrote a piece full of Jewish wisdom. Do me a favor. Start writing Jewish theater. What I had to transfer is the yeshiva world, the, the Haredi world, the religious world, the 2000 years, the Talmudic world, Talmudic reasoning, uh, Jewish humor, not just from, from the Yiddish theater kind of. Right. From that, all these things that was been pushed into me or put into me, into my soul, into my being, and now I had to put it on stage you basically create a new form of theater in New York yeah. and you, you start to move into journalism. What brought you into the new world of journalism? What brought me into journalism is because we did this kind of Jewish theater and it was very different Jewish theater. It was unique Jewish theater and the, the audience loved it very much, but I could never raise it from the level of off of Broadway or off Broadway, which we did in the Jewish theater to, to bring it to big off Broadway or to or to Broadway. And we had Broadway producer coming to see the shows, but they were all Jewish and they wouldn't take a Jewish show because it's too Jewish. You know, in the meantime, I was writing uh, a little pieces of news, you know, not news articles here and there, but very little. So the idea came to join George Bush. But then I looked and I saw that George Bush travels to Saudi Arabia. So to make a short, a long story short, I got a visa from the Saudis, and I like amazing fun over there. 
we are at a party and I told the story to, to a woman who was writing for, for an Italian paper. She said, this is a very interesting story. Can you write for us the story? I said, of course. And so so I wrote the story for begins. Courier and the, the Sera, and they put it on the front page. And then somebody inside Germany read a story in, in, Itali in, in, in Italian. He said, could you write us the story, but make it twice as long? I said, oh, this is an interesting <laughs> request. Proposal. I'll accept it. So and when the, pub the article was published, readers sent tons of letters to, to the site asking, what a pleasure. Finally, somebody writes with Jewish humor the style of writing that we don't have since World War II. And this Thank is what you. the Germans said. The German, German readers. So I started writing a lot of articles. I became a journalist. So you basically fell into it. I, fell, I studied journalism also in my 15 years university. You know, I right. Don't... So let me ask you a couple questions. Yeah. You fall out of yeshiva. Yeah. You fall into the academics, the humanities, the arts. Yeah. You fall into playwriting and then you fall into journalism. Yeah. And all of your books since then have really highlighted one main thing, the underlying anti-Semitism amongst Gentile cultures. Was this your intention to even highlight this or, 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 or did you fall and do it as well? Never ever. Um, writing about anti-Semitism to me is exactly like being a plumber. You have to go to the toilet, it's dirty, it stinks and you have to take sometimes the old thinking what you want. Okay. This is not a job that somebody who was born in Nebrak and raised in Jerusalem dreams of doing, especially not if his father was a Rosh Hashiva, his grandfather was a Rebbe, and he goes to the line of Rebbes and Rabbis. No, this is right. not my dream. But you ended up being I very good up, at it. I ended up because... I mean, you ended up being very good at it because Thank of your you background in theater. Thank, and, uh, because of my background in theater, and because I know never to have... And I'm, I never have a fear of meeting a villain, I have no problem because in theater, the villain is, is, is a very necessary character. Okay. It's a love character. Which drives the story forward. Which drives the story forward. Okay, I have a serious question for you, yes. though. You play all these characters in all of your books. Yeah. You've got Toby the German, Tuvia the Jew. You've, you've played Jordanian. You've Abu played, Ali. You've played Abu Ali. I am Abu Ali okay, the Palestinian. The, 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 the Palestinian. You've also yeah. played the, uh, Prince Sheikh before. You've tried to get away with Bedouin. You've said on your worst day, or no, what was the line? that you might, if you feel like it, one day try to be Ethiopian. Why not? Like, uh, even though you can't pass as a Syrian when you tried to go into the refugee camps in, in your refugee book. You have to have some type of specific love of people you must and have. their stories you to must do have. what you do and you to go have. undercover and to, to, to get in and, and, and a curiosity that is not of the normal nature. Where does that come from? I don't know. I don't know. This you have to ask. God. This has got to be like the joy of your life based on everything it, that you've it, done. It, it is fun. It is fun. But at the same time, the set part is that wherever I go, I try to talk about baseball or I try to talk about theater like in London or in, in England or in, well, in Britain in general. I try to talk about theater. I try to talk about Brexit. I try to talk about the EU. And that's my purpose of going there. And it turns out at the end, I talk to people. They don't talk to me about theater. No, they, they don't even talk to me about Brexit. What does it talk to me about? The Jews. The Jews. Is that a big part of your tactic? Or, or is it's, it not even a tactic at all? This is the way I approach people in general. Right. And people see that love. Understood. And that's no matter who is my interview. It can be the leader of the Nazi party. It can be Hamas. It can be Hezbollah. It can be anybody. I will find something so nice they, about the person. I hook up with a nice thing. And then the people say what they think. But, right, but you have it's this. It's in the culture. You have this line in, I think it's Catch the Jew where you talk about that Jews are vicious people and that they killed Jesus. And if I'm correct, what you're kind of getting at in, in, in all of your books is that this, this medieval form of anti-Semitism still permeates its way through society just in a different modern way through the expression of anti-Zionism now. So what do we see in the New Testament? The Jews are the children of Satan. Right. And the Christians are the children of God, of right. the Father in heaven. What? When Jesus comes here to Jerusalem, to the temple, what does he say in the Old Testament? What does he find? He find the worshiping Jews? What? No, he finds the money changers and corruption. Money changers. Right. From this we know, what are the money changers? The Jews. From this we know that the Jews are into money. Right. So you see a lot of examples like this in the New Testament 
that survived the religious beliefs of people. And that's what it is. But now it's outside of the religious beliefs. Yeah, of course. It's, it's, it's more already, permeated it's, it's like, permanent. It's like the, the, it's like the it's, culture. It's become part of popular it's, culture yeah, now. It's already embedded in the culture. Well, one of the things that I find most interesting, and I was talking about this with Ron Dermer when he was on uh, our show last time, was that for the first time for the American Jewish experience, anti-Semitism has permeated itself into pop culture. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's something that's never existed in the Jewish American experience before. It's not true. First of all, it's not true. What happened is, is that the cycle of anti-Semitism changed. For example, American Christianity, you know, the evangelical world, right. you know, was different. It's a new kind of Christianity, you know. While the Christian European, for example, you know, cries, you know, a terrible it is. You see pictures in the chairs uh, of Jesus on the cross and blood, drops of blood coming. You, you see, and, and, and people come and, and in those bloods, you know, go to the church and they, they kiss the drops yeah. of blood. You know, the, th the crown thorn of it. The, you know, it's like horrible. Evangelical Christian go like this. You go to the church of evangelical Christian and Jesus died for me. And Jesus died for me. And Jesus died. And Jesus died. He died for me. Ohio. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you. I mean, the whole thing of the of the of, of the crucifix, crucifixion has become like you know, it's like it's like so, a celebration. So, 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 so that kind of anti-Semitism of the Jew is changed a little bit because it's so beautiful that Jesus died. The pendulum now moves, and the American Christianity as becoming anti-Jewish also. You go to churches, and this I do within this book, for example, and you see even in evangelical churches, yeah. even in the South, that's supposedly pro-Israel, you see the 40 plus love Israel, and the 40 or 30 mi minus, you know, in that range, mm -hmm. going down, they are really critical of Israel. The British, the British is very different. The British, the old British society, it's a monarchy. The society is divided from the high elite, you know, like the kingdom, then lords or whatever, all the way to the bottom, to the paupers and prostitutes on the street. So in that society, the Jew is an animal to be despised, no matter what the Jews does. Remember, and this I learned only over there, the first blood libels against Jews comes from Norwich, from England. I have some questions for you that I want you to answer. How much you pay me? Another glass of wine. Okay. Okay, good. You love me, don't you? I love you. That's what I thought. I yeah. love you too. I love I people am. who come to me with bottles of wine, even if I'm not a wine drinker. I want to know um, what you think causes self-hating Jewish people to exist. I, I want to know, where do you think the self-hating Jew comes from? Where does it come from? It comes from anti-Semitism itself. You have a nation here, a bunch, a group of people, for 2,000 years, they have been led to believe that the Jew is a ganev, a thief, that Jewish girls look really bad, ugly, that the Jews are murderers in nature, that the Jews are this and this is every bad thing. It traps off on some people, and some people want that out, out of their systems. You're born into Judaism. It's not their fault. They want, they ate the Jew in them. So they join the orchestra or the choir of anti-Jews, anti-Semites, and then they become a little bit better in that. That's basically what you see. How do you feel that modern anti-Semitism has affected the United States? It's not modern anti-Semitism, it's an old anti-Semitism, it's a 2000 year old anti-Semitism. How does it affect the United States? You see more and more people um, critical of Jews and of Israel or for whatever it is. Now that you know the issues, you can be critical of Israel, I have no problem. But if Israel is the only country you criticize, I have a problem with you. Go, as I did, walk the wits and breaths of America, go to Jewish temples and listen to the rabbi speak. Instead of doing kol nidre, the rabbi makes a speech about the horrible crimes that one country is committing against innocent people, the only occupying force on the planet, named Israel. 
You go to this temple, people who don't believe in God and say Kaddish for Palestinian dead. What you're saying reminds me of something that you wrote in your book about refugees. And you wrote this at the end of the book. And you said the fate of the Jew is to love those that hate him. Why do you think that is? Because we are sick. We are sick. That's the only religion we have in American Judaism today. Let me ask you a question. What's the most ridiculous situation you've ever been in? Today. <laughs> Answering questions like this. <laughs> you love it. Don't get me wrong. You love it. You, you love it. Final question. Yes. I'm getting ready for my bar mitzvah. I'm 13 years old. Yeah. If you could sum up everything you've learned as a yeshiva student, uh, a playwright, a journalist, uh, an activist, a thinker, in one sentence, if you could sum up everything that you've learned, what could you teach me? What would you tell me? Judaism is not a glit. Judaism is not kugel or the filter fish. Judaism is not hummus or falafel. Judaism is not a flag. Judaism is the holy books or the ancient books written by Jews. Starts with the Tanakh. You gotta read it, all of it. If you wanna know what Judaism is, it's beautiful books. The Talmud, the Jewish literature. That's what makes us different. The only thing we brought to the world that others did not are these books. That's Judaism. If you wanna be a good Jew, Read the books. Read the books. I want to thank my very hysterical, wonderful special guest, Tuvia Tenenbaum. If you like the wine or are interested in the wine that we're drinking today, the Jezreel Rosé, you can find it at wineonthevine.com. If you'd like to plant a vine at the Jezreel Winery, you can do that at wineonthevine.org. And remember, when you're drinking your Israeli wine, drink it with somebody you love. Too For the awesome. Temple Mounts. <laughs> thank you. It was a pleasure to be with you. A pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure. You are a very, you are a, a very interesting person, a unique person, a lovable person, a funny person, a smart person, and you have a crew of uh, over 20 people here. They are unbelievable <laughs> professional. They are great. They are, they are unbelievable. It's like a nation by itself. <laughs> thank you, Lechaim.